So this video is all to do with the particle model. Um, it's for the fact test. Now, the first question is describe the particle arrangement. So what we've got, we've got solids, we've got liquids, and we've got gases. Now, what we need to do is we need to think about the strength of the force of attraction between particles. Now, we get all sorts of different things that are going on here. So the force of the attraction between particles in a solid is very strong. In a liquid, they're strong, not quite as strong as in a solid. And in a gas, they are very, oh gosh, why did I put weak first? Very weak, so swap those around. The arrangement, they are regular, right? So what they are is they're just like circles all in a line, right? And then the next low row, and then the next row. Okay, everything's very regular. In a liquid, they are random, but still close together. And in a gas, they are random, but far apart. Okay, so that's the arrangement. Packing, they are very close together. They are close, right, but not as close as the others. And here, again, some of these things come out quite similar. They're random, but what they're doing is they are continuously going in a straight line. Motion. They are vibrating in a fixed position, right? So what they're doing is just kind of sat there in one place, just vibrating. On this one, they slide randomly over each other. Okay, so they're just kind of they're kind of moving, right? But what they're doing is they're kind of just going over each other and sort of sliding around. For gas, they are far apart. Okay, and just like I wrote in the other one, is they're going in a nice straight line. Right, draw the um, label the states of matter diagram. There's tons and tons and tons of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to literally write gas liquid, solid, all right? Going from a solid to a liquid, always think about water, melt. Going from a liquid to a gas, evaporate. Then going from a gas to a liquid, condensation. Going from a liquid to a solid, freeze. And then the last ones on here all right, are the ones where it goes solid straight to a gas is sublimation, sublimation. And going from a gas straight to a solid is deposition, right? Deposit. So it's basically a gas being deposited onto a desk or whatever it is, which is then deposition. What is the equation for density? Density equals mass divided by volume. Okay, now you could have, it's a bit weird this one, density you could have a number of different units for it. So if mass is kilograms and volume is centimeter cubed, it could be kilograms per centimeter cubed, or it could be kilograms per meter cubed, or it could be grams per centimeter cubed or it could be grams per meter cubed. Now draw the heating and cooling graph, right? So what I'm gonna do here is I'll draw the graph in black. So it goes up, across. Now obviously what you'll do is you'll use a ruler. It goes up, across, and then it goes up again. Down here, we'll do this in red, right? What we've got is we've got our solid. Here, that is our liquid, and here is our gas. And now what we've got to do is you've just got to know the words. It's a bit similar to the diagram they had before, right, where a solid to a liquid is melting. A liquid to a solid 
going in that direction is freezing. And then we could have liquid to a gas is going in that direction, doesn't matter which side the arrow goes, evaporation. And gas to a liquid is condensation. Question number five, what is specific heat capacity and which three things do, does it depend on? Specific heat capacity is the energy required to raise one kilogram of substance, substance's temperature, by one degree C. It depends on how heavy it is, so the mass. It depends on the substance. So iron and tin may well have, well, they will have different specific heat capacities. And it also depends on the energy put in. What is specific latent heat, specific latent heat of fusion, and specific latent heat of vaporization? So we've got specific latent heat, fusion, and vaporization. Right, now, I, I know I'm going to struggle to get these in the boxes here. So I'll start off with specific latent heat. It is the energy required to change 1 kg of substance is state of matter okay that's the specific latent heat so it's the energy required to change 1 kilogram that's a terrible g 1 kilogram of substance is state of matter so it could be liquid to a solid uh, gas to a liquid, whichever one it may well be. Specific latent heat of fusion is the energy needed to change 1 kg of substance from a solid to a liquid. And the last one is then specific latent heat of vaporization. Think about vapes, so what you're doing is you're turning a liquid into a gas. It is the energy needed to change one kg of substance from a liquid oh no I'm not going to put it in to a gas right now there's one thing that I always 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 forget I always forget one particular fact with this and the fact that I've forgotten is no change in temperature so basically what happens is it could change at it can go from a liquid to a gas at 37 degrees C, right? And when it actually goes from the liquid to the gas, there is no change in temperature, even though you're still putting energy in. So the specific latent heat of fusion, you've also got to remember, there is no change in temperature. And for specific latent heat of vaporization, there is no change in temperature. Now, if you remember the graph that we had before, I'm just going to kind of draw it here, right? So we had the graph there like that. It goes up, across, up, across, up. These flat bits here, that there is the specific latent heat of fusion. That flat bit there is the specific latent heat of uh, vaporization. And if you notice, here's the temperature. There is no change in temperature. What is internal energy and what happens to the internal energy heater system? Internal energy is the energy stored 
in a system. Internal energy is the total kinetic and potential energy. Right, so kinetic is kind of like movement energy, whatever the actual system is doing, it's moving, and potential is the store of energy in there. Heating, now this, these sound quite obvious really, what you can have is it can be a change of state. You could have an increase in temperature, and you could have an increase in kinetic energy.